prepare for the height of Mardi Gras, scientists with the Dauphin Island Sea Lab are warning you about the potentially harmful effects of Mardi Gras beads. Dr. Ruth Carmichael and her son Thomas have spent the past five years learning how Mardi Gras beads can shed metals that in turn can actually hurt people and the environment. Mardi Gras isn't Mardi Gras without the infamous beads. And it's often a competition to see who's decked out in the most color. But newly published research by a team at the Dauphin Island Sea Lab shows Mardi Gras beads could release potentially harmful metals into the environment. We're not here to rain on anybody's parade. This is still a really fun time, fun activity. Absolutely. But conscientious yeah. about the contaminants that are on the beads. The study started when Thomas Carmichael, a high school senior, had to do a science project. So it originally started as a science fair project when I was in the seventh grade at Phillips Preparatory Middle School. Uh, we were required to do a science fair project and I wanted to do something really real, really interesting. And growing up here, Mardi Gras is a very big part of our year every year. I remember noticing flakes of paint coming off the Mardi Gras beads and little chips and just it being very dirty and kind of gross every year. Uh, and that sparked an interest okay, what is coming off of these beads? What's on the beads? Thomas, along with his mom, Dr. Ruth Carmichael, a senior marine scientist at the Dauphin Island Sea Lab, studied beads for five years. Growing up with a scientist for a parent, uh, <laughs> there's I've been exposed to science my entire life. I brought up the ideas to her, and she was like, well, if you're going to do it, you're going to have to do it right. They recently published their findings in the Gulf and Caribbean Research Journal. The study focused on figuring out what elements were on the beads and whether or not those elements came off, like lead, arsenic, um, chromium, copper, barium, uh, and we looked at the difference between the color of the beads. They discovered the quantity of metals released from the beads depended on the color of the beads and the type or intensity of handling. When he just put a single beaded necklace into water and he put it into 750 milliliters of water, which is a, just to give you a, an equivalent, it's equivalent to about a bottle of wine, and then shook it up, there were some metals that were released, at, you know, just for five minutes of shaking it, they were released at concentrations too high to be considered safe for drinking water. The Carmichael's alleged excess beads can also pose a risk to our water systems. You obviously have seen the, the huge number of beads that get left on the street and they get swept into drains. The street cleaners come, uh, street cleaners come by, they spray water, they then get swept more into drains. There's a large amount of water running over those beads. It is really aggressively moving all that material from the paint into water supplies, into uh, fisheries, estuary, like, like natural water areas. And there are now these potentially toxic elements in these areas. They say the biggest takeaway is to be careful and do your part. After you handle them, wash your hands. Don't put them in your mouth. Don't let children put them into their mouths. Um, don't, uh, you know, give, give them to children unsupervised. Pick it up off the street. Make sure things get properly disposed. Um, bead reuse programs. You know, there's a lot of that. Like people reuse the beads, so we're not just putting new beads into the environment. Now, if you want to read the full publication on that story, you can visit the link on our website at fox10tv.com.